All right, so now we're moving on. Database Development Design Week 4, Lab 3, Walk 4 Forms. This is Part 2. All right, we're going to pick up here into Skill 7, Input Mask. We're going to pick up right where we left off. Let's go ahead and open up our access. All right, here's where we were. Uh, we're still, make sure you're still in Layout Form, Layout View. Okay, and now we're going to click on the phone text box okay all right go up to design tab and we're going to click on the property sheet and that's going to open to our right and here let me get you let me see if i can drag this over so we can see it all right so here we are, and click on the data tab. All right, I got to be, notice I just had to click on the phone again. I don't know why it came off. I clicked on the phone so it lit up. Make sure you got something in yellow. Clicked on the data tab, and now we have a thing called input mask. And I have to drag it just a little bit farther so you can see. When you click on it, you're going to get this little button right here. You're going to click on that button. If I can get to it. And that's going to open up a window for us. Right, again, you get this warning. Just say, okay. And here we go. Let's go ahead and start. Okay, let's drag this back so we can see what's going on here. All right, so that way you can watch the phone numbers. We've got phone number selected up here. We're going to hit next. And for place call character, we've got this underscore. We're going to change this to a number sign. And let's see how this works. Let's click the try it box. Now you see you get these number signs with the format. If I start typing in a number... numbers will start to appear that way so that's all it is it's, it's the placeholder when there's nothing there so that's what your input mask does go ahead hit next one more time then how do you want to store the data with the symbols in the mask or without this is a case of the symbols will actually eat up more space I'm going to store it without just because it, it just a habit. I'm going to hit next and finish. All right. Now, I'm just going to go up to the book's got us doing it again to zip. I'm just going to skip over that. We're just going to hop over back to form view. And if you scroll to the bottom just for fun and create a new one, brand new field, brand new record, scroll back up top. And let me hit on the phone button here, and you'll see it pops up as your subnet mask. And again, if you start typing stuff in, it goes away. So. All right, so that's it for the sub for the input masks. All right, so th we're on uh, skill eight now. We're gonna skip ahead a little bit, <coughs> kind of skip backwards and forth, just because I already started a blank form here. Let's go ahead. We're gonna put in another fake person here uh, you can put any information you want in this is the numbers they're putting in the book eight seven nine five six seven uh, got Branson first name Alfred street address one two one Azure Lane. Again, put whatever you want in here. You really, really don't need to copy out of the book. Uh, let's see. And then I can show you. See, this is how, keep in mind, this is, this top part's only affecting the residence table we have. 
Here, let me grab this over here so you can see what I'm talking about. You know, so we have the residence table. So the top part of the form is only filled out. The bottom part is the water bill. So now if I go and add a new water bill and I say, let's give this guy a, go down here and I give them a billing date of, let's just say one July 18, rate of, I don't care. Usage of 50, I don't know, 20. And that gives you your billing. Okay, so that right there, and that actually populates a brand new table on your field. Now we can go down here. I'm just going to go back. I'm just using the back button to go back to an, another person we already have here. And you could do the same thing in here. For somebody who already exists, if you wanted to put in a new billing, or if you wanted to adjust their billing and pay a bill form down here, you could do it right within this form. So that's all really is for this skill. Don't have to worry about doing it, just so you know that you can go to anybody and add a new line in the subform and it'll affect the water bills table because what this form does is it controls two tables that are connected together through a relationship. All right, let's close this out. We're gonna open up our new payments query. Yeah, save changes, yeah. Uh, we'll just call this residence form, whatever you wanna call it, I don't really care. Residence form is fine with me. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and open it up in design view, the query, and we're going to go over here, and we are going to set amount due for water bills is greater than zero, okay? And close that out. Save changes, yes, and you can double click on it to make sure and you can see yep, the amount due is are all greater than zero. Close that out. Now, making sure you're highlighted on this, you've got this selected. Under queries, verify it's selected, and then click on the create tab. And in the forms group, just click the form button. which, sorry, I realized that I had that screen hard to see. So when I had selected it, I went up to the f create group and I clicked on form, okay? Clicked on form and that's what brought me here to the forms layout. Okay, so this gives us a form of our query. And again, within the query, <coughs> I can put in a paid date and make the changes again, and that will update the tables. It's really kind of all you got to worry about within the query. So let's go to the next one. All right, we're up to skill 10 now, last skill before we go to skill 11. So let's go close this out. Yeah, we can save it, whatever you want to save it as. That's fine. We'll call this one form. form. Again, I'm not really picky on names. As long as I see there's forms in there when you turn the lab in, I'll get you credit. We're going to go up now to create. We're going to go to navigation under forms. You got a bunch of options here. We are going to select vertical tabs left. Okay. All right. So there it pops up. Okay. So up here you'll see an add new. We're going to click on that. And in the format tab, sorry about that. We're going to go to control formatting group. Click quick styles. And let's just click this one down here. <laughs> With this still selected, we're going to click change shape and we're going to go like for a rounded rectangle up here. You can pick any shape you want, I really don't care. Uh, drag the residence form from the navigation pane into the add new button. Okay. 
Okay, so we grab the residence form here from the navigation pane. We drag it up here, add new. We can do the same with the water <laughs> bills form. And the new payments form. And obviously, you can go here and you can, you know, delete ones you don't want. Okay, so go up to the design tab here. Click the property sheet. And that pops up over here. Sorry, let me grab this again so I can drag it over for you. Okay, mine popped up already, but if you're not, you want to make sure you have from the selection type here that you have form selected. Okay, that, that gives you the forms properties. Now on the property sheet, click the other tab and we're going to go to modal and we're going to bring the arrow down and click yes on that so we're going to bring there's an arrow to the right here you have to take my word for it and click yes okay good now So that helps it so the navigation field minimizes when you open a form and reactivates when you close it. That's what modal does. So we'll go ahead, we'll close that out. All right, so finally, let's go ahead up here to file. Now we're going to scroll down here again. And I'm going to click on options down here in the bottom. <laughs> Okay, my options are popping up. Let me go ahead and get you over. We can see the options. And I'm going to select current database. And the display form, I'm going to click. Okay, hold on, cancel. Let me go ahead and close this out so we have this saved. Yes, we want to save change to the navigation form. We'll just call it navigation form. Go back to file options. The options will come up and we're going to go to current database display form. Scroll down and we'll hit navigation form and hit OK. Let's close and open the current database for the displayed option to take effect. So now if you close and reopen it, It'll automatically go to the navigation form as what we did. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna open our other file we downloaded. This will be for this is gonna be for skill 11. So this will be the last skill of this lesson. Okay, save and close out your file. You're done with the first one. Let's open up the uh, employees, the MS 11 employees. Go ahead. You got a security risk. Microsoft has blocked a macros running because it's not trusted. Uh, again, I don't know if yours is gonna say this or not, but oops. What I'm going to do is you're going to see if I can get it over for you. Sorry again about this having to drag back and forth, but this X right here, I'm just going to X the damn thing out because I don't care because I know these are safe. All right. Drag my back here. All right. So we've got a database with a single table. Take a quick look. Okay, I've got an employee table with quite a bit of records. Okay, this is going to be really quick. This is about validating data. If you scroll to the bottom, you're going to see we have two. Everyone else is a male or a female here in gender, M or F. We have a female and a male. We have word female written here twice. Let's go ahead. We're going to change this first one because this is Buddy Fritz. We're going to change this one to M for male. And we're going to change this bottom one to F. Because the reason is we want this consistency. We want consistency across the database. But we want to be able to enforce consistency to keep people from being able to type the wrong thing in. Well, we're still lit up in gender. See, I've got gender lit up here with the red. Go, go up top to table fields here. Okay. And then in the properties group, I want to click on the field size box. I want to set this to 1. What that does is that limits me. I can only put in some data maybe lost. That's okay. I already fixed it. 
But that means I can only put in one character here. So if I tried to put in, it won't let me even type anymore because I'm stuck at one. Okay. And now we're going to go to the field. In the fields tab, we're going to go to the field validation group, which is over here. And we're going to click on under validation, field validation rules. Okay. And then this window pops up in the expression builder. Okay. So now I'm going to put in for the expression builder. You can have F or you can have M. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Those are the only two options you can have. I, I understand this is an older book written, and then we may have other options going forward or right now, but just to follow the book, I'm just going to put F or M. If you want to add something else to your form, I am not going to deduct points for you doing that. So, But there you go. <laughs> so we'll go ahead. We'll hit OK. Now let's just go down here and try putting like something like Y in there. You hit Enter, and you're going to get one or more of the prohibited values. The validation rule is set for the employee gender. It has to be F or M. Okay. Now I realize this is outdated, but you know we're going by the books. So there we go. I put an F in. I'm fine. If I put an M in, I'm fine. All right. That's it for that. Go ahead and save that one. Close it out. That's a validation, and we are done with Lab Three. Thank you very much.